Tu veux bien Nishit So welcome everyone, this is Carsten Rothpaller speaking from ECLE Europe, uh, today having the pleasure to facilitate uh, our 11th Grow Smarter webinar, this time with the focus on smart solutions for multi-modality patterns. And before we actually start, I would like to give you still some hints on how to interact. We have several people popping up still. Um, listening in so you can use um, this facility um, the software in the following way at, at the upper part uh, in, in the middle you can uh, enlarge your screen that is uh, sometimes quite useful uh, you can uh, click on uh, yeah the participants list you can you can unmute you if you have the right to do so uh, otherwise you are also able to interact with us, um, asking questions uh, here with um, in, in the chat, um, using the chat function. Um, please post them either to uh, the host. I uh, suggest that you present uh, that you post uh, your questions, however, to everyone, so everyone is able to see them, and we potentially have not duplicating questions. So please chat with us, send us your question in relation, uh, in relation to the topic, in relation to the current uh, presentation that you are listening. In. You have also the function of raising your hand uh, to to give us the signal of, of uh, go faster, go slower, to applaud. So in that sense, be interactive with us and uh, yeah, interactive with our uh, with the panelists, or actually a cluster of panelists. We have uh, the first focus set uh, with Senate on uh, smart taxi stand systems. Uh, Sergio Sauri is, is uh, there, but uh, will be also uh, complemented uh, by uh, Paco uh, Gaspargin. Then we have um, from re uh, representing Kapio uh, Tanya Bullmann, also complemented by the from from uh, Thomas Bischoff will be will be there, and last but not least, we have uh, after the presentation uh, of services of our two lighthouse cities, Barcelona and Cologne, also the service of a replication city, uh, fellow city uh, in this case Valletta. Uh, here, Victor is uh, present. Benstino from the Transport Malta uh, organization. Uh, focusing on analyzing um, and uh, how to replicate car and bike sharing systems. So having said that, I would uh, like to give as much room as possible to uh, your questions and to our interactions. And uh, with that, I would like to hand over to Paco to uh, start your presentation. Paco, you are able to unmute yourself, uh, yourself if you wish, and then uh, share the screen with the sharing option. Okay, C can you hear us? Yes, we can. Okay, perfect. You know what it is? Uh. It's on the upper side. Share and then my screen. No. no, it's not. Uh, sure. It's not working now. We cannot. We will. We, we, Click on my screen. It's not uh, okay. Now, now, perfect. Yeah, yeah, perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so let's start. Um, so we talk about improving mobility through, uh, through the smart taxi stands. So basically, uh, we talk about the motivation why we decided uh, to introduce this uh, measure, and we we'll make a short description about the the measure the baseline scenario, the measure, the, the business model, 
uh, the problems we, we have it and possible uh, possibilities to replicate uh, all in the next steps so what's the motivation of um, now we decided well, at the end when we were talking with urban mobility in cities and uh, the taxi represents an, an important uh, number of vehicles kilometers per day um, for, uh, and, and usually when, when you're thinking about the, the, kilo, the, the vehicles kilometers what they're doing the taxis often a lot of them is they are empty just looking for clients so a, a good way to improve the, the efficiency and even the externalities associated with the, with the cost of the taxis is just to keep uh, to be in the stops waiting for the clients and the clients can go there this is an easy way but for, for to do that what is really important is to provide uh, the users and the tax drivers real-time information about the occupation of the tax stops tax stops i mean i mean uh, the clients uh, the potential client uh, needs to to know where they are the taxis uh, and where they're located and how many we can have and, and for the the tax drivers it's the same it's important to know in, in which stops they, they can go the 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 occupancy and so on so uh, we make a, a, a recent survey of uh, 600 tax drivers uh, show that almost the, eight, the 78 percent will uh, we would like to, to, to be working uh, stopping in the in the taxi stops uh, if they know no how many are available or not and even the client has the, the the possibility to to know how many taxes we have in each stop so it's in, in a measure that at the end of the day can be with less vehicles kilometers uh, during on the city so what has been done so the idea the main idea is to, to install a magnetic sensors in the taxi stops to know if there is a taxi or not to develop a system to calculate the occupation or real uh, of taxi stop in real time and later to monitor um, the information using a user-friendly app uh, at the end of the day the, the users of the tax drivers need to know if it's worthwhile to go to the taxi stop or uh, a taxi stop or not so basically here you can see on, on the on the right side the the, the companies uh, that were involved in each part of, of the process um, so what's the 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 the, the, the steps we follow to, to implement this um, this solution the first is to know the analyze the use and the location of the, the different uh, taxis and how to introduce the sensors because for instance, if introducing a parallel taxi stands, one of the problems we have is often we don't know how many taxis they are. As you can see in the in, in the in the figure represented on on the left, uh, often it depends on the length of the sites, how are located, can be confusing. So this is one of the factors we need to consider when we're introducing the, the sensors. When we're talking about perpendicular stands, it's easier, but here it's important to make sure where the taxis can park because then at the end of the day we need to make sure it's like the the, the information from the sensor is that represents the reality we have in the in the taxi stops so finally we decided to use a perpendicular like this sometimes even as you can see on the on the on the photo of the left of the right side is not always the case because you can see often uh, some taxis if there are a lot of them i mean when the occupancy is more than 100 percent we cannot assure that the, the number of taxis is 100%, maybe even can be more no, for the illegal uh, parking of taxis. So, and, and also uh, the second step is to decide the communication network to use and to ensure the sign allocation. So here we, we use the signal Fox network by, by owned by Philnex and used by IoT connectivity. Um, here we're decided in a way that there the were a good uh, connectivity with all the uh, all the the stuff with with this uh, communication network this was managed by Celnix, the communication company and the third step was install uh, to introduce the sensors on the here you see the, the pictures so we put it in a way to to well to, to know was what easy to introduce i mean it's not it's something can be easily for instance now we, we replace the batteries and can be done in, in one morning so we, we don't have to we don't have to spend so many days and so just with one morning it's it's possible to, to introduce all the sensors it's, it's pretty easy that the construction as you can see and finally once we have the sensor the first the, the last step was designed and developed a mobile application 
it, it's a, it's a, a, a the, the DSTV is very user friendly applications for the tax driver and the, and the clients to know how many taxes or how many spots are available in each tax stop. Um, so, as you can see, it represents several, several parts of, the, of, of the several uh, views of the applications. Well, what, uh, this is the, the, the measure what we introduce. So, what's the idea? Here, um, the final goal, as we said at the beginning, was to reduce the number of vehicles kilometers of the taxi when they are empty. So the, the baseline scenario is before the app application, what is the, the standard operation, and to see once we introduce the, the, the app, what is the, the different behavior. In a deal scenario, we'll see compare the vehicles, uh, the vehicles kilometers with one scenario to the another. But there are some concerns we need to, to, to point out here. First of all, it's uh, first the consumers and tax drivers and, and service providers uh, have to be willing to use the app, the first thing. And also, once another element is once the app is launched, uh, first the consumer are not using uh, immediately. And another problem is often um, you have several, I mean, at the end we have three taxi stops. But uh, for sure, if we, instead of three, it's all of them, for sure the effect is much more than we can measure. So we need to be aware like the, the benefits of this measure will increase, I don't say linearly or exponentially, but for sure will increase, I would say maybe even exponentially, with the, with the number of uh, taxi stops where we're applying this solution. So we need to be aware of that. No? So we'll not be surprised if maybe the results are not uh, in terms of vehicles kilometers very high, but if we introduce in a whole city, uh, in the total city can, can be the case. So, data collection, so the lady from the gross matter platform, so uh, for each stop and temporary space, we had the, 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 the spots, uh, the total number of spots, the available spots number, the status, the average uh, stay length, and so on, so we'll be able to get this information. Uh, at the end, we're able to see results like this. No? This is, for instance, as an example, is the stand number 145. So we, we see, as a measure, it represents here the monthly average of available spots. So we can see, for instance, this case is not so much. No, it's even decreasing a little bit. Another example we find is this is the number 48. Mm -hmm. So this is a little bit variable. The tendency is to grow. But still, the, the, the number here is 8, so more or less it's less than 50%. Uh, and, and another case with more details of information here, we can see the, the several information. So the, the, the end is to, this is the information we have now, we need to see the effects no, in terms of vehicles kilometers. To do that, uh, here, uh, since we are involved in the observatory of the taxes in Barcelona, we have data for that. They will help us to get some data about the current operation of the taxis. Uh, currently, there are 30 taxis. They, they, they provide real data about GPS, their positions, and so on on a daily basis. It's not so many taxis, 30, but still, it's, it's the, the, this taxi, uh, these 30 taxis will get from them a good quantity of data and very variable because we know every day during the, the, the whole year what they are doing through GPS and also this interviews in the taxi drivers and users. So, some data just to, to, to the, the sector of taxi in Barcelona. In 2016, the average occupation degree of the taxi is about 60%. The average um, CO2 produced for each taxi is about uh, 7,000 kilograms. As an annual average, the taxi covers uh, 10 kilometers per service an hour with a client and 8 kilometers per service per service uh, uh, hour empty. So um, this will be some average uh, values we have. This will be the, the, the base to see what's the, the, the normal behavior of the taxi without the application of this measure. So uh, regarding the business model for this measure, uh, basically, because at the end of the day, what we want to is reduce the vehicle's kilometers in more than in terms of cost. The, the, the assessment of the, of the measure should be based more on, on cost. So the idea is to, to analyze um, the preparation phase, the procurement of sensors and agreement and so on, and develop a maintenance. And here the risk, as we said at the beginning, is that at the end we, we monitor a very low quantity of the, um, stop uh, taxi uh, stops so at the end all the 
positive, all the gains we can get from that measure will increase a lot with the number of, of uh, taxes. One of the problems we have is the, the sensors. Uh, uh, the sensors battery uh, they, they didn't run all, all the time we wanted. So even uh, in September, uh, we had to, to introduce, uh, to reinstall another ones. Here you see an example of the percentage of battery, you know, it, it with the date of, um, night, uh, of October, in the middle of October last year. So in the end, we were able to, to introduce and to set that on. So we have data till the beginning of this year, and now we're getting a new data. So, but unfortunately, because the problem we have with the batteries, we're not able to fill some months of data. But well, I think we, we this will not affect. We think that the final conclusions we can get from, from this measure. So possibilities to replicate. Um, since we, we're thinking about the gross mart in 2014, um, changed a lot of things. For sure, it's now apps, new mm -hmm. applications. Uh, we think it's a measure uh, very easy to replicate, that the technology is available, uh, and especially now when all the taxes are using ads for using. So even in some cities, uh, People are not allowed to pick up taxis on, on the way. They have to be in the stops. So we think like it's, it's a, a very easy replicable measure that so we can introduce. So the next steps now it's uh, we are now putting in service the, the application. Uh, we are getting a new data. So now um, uh, and also we need to do a survey of the tax drivers about the, using the app, the, the, uh, make an assessment about the impact they have. And finally, we'll have a detailed and technical analysis about the measure and including the economical data. So basically, this will be the, the main findings of, uh, of this measure so far. So hopefully, we'll be able the next month to have more data and to uh, provide a more detailed analysis of, of the measure. So for questions or things, so thanks for the attention. Thank you very much. Uh, for outlining these, these elements of, of this particular measure on uh, smart taxi systems uh, here in Barcelona. And there is a question not uh, to know yeah, on the data collection, if, if the data you presented, if I understood it correctly, is average data. Um, so could you maybe say a little bit more about uh, the data you have gathered uh, what what uh, if you have shown different cases uh, what what you have seen uh, of how you can display yeah so basically we, we introduce here is just the, the average data so um, I don't know if Paco can, can 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 give more explanation about I mean, basically, what we can see from these cases is just the, the different level of occupancy. You know, of course, it will depend a lot of the tax uh, uh, taxi stops, the, the places. I mean, we have, I mean, at the end, you get data from some specific stops. The interesting here will be to have all these data from the whole city, no? So you will be able to let a very worthwhile conclusion about the behavior of the tax sector, in which place the people are using more, and which timing. I mean, now we can get some conclusions about the, the timing and which uh, use, no? but at the end, it's a specific picture for three specific locations. No? So maximum we can get is how we use the taxi through, through the year, assume, uh, through, the, um, through the day, but also very focused in the specific areas. It's, it's uh, a, an area more uh, touristy will be different behavior. It's more um, with business, no? I don't know if Paco wants to complete something to with the data. One. Yeah, the, the data is, is only the, the September to January because in February the all sensor is is not provide the data and in, in October this year is now installed the new sensors and beginning the January have a new data. And when the new data have a average time with the occupating the in the, the taxi stop. Okay, uh, then uh, another um, uh, question now from my side, but uh, I'm inviting uh, you again to also chat your questions uh, or raise your hand, and and I can unmute you. Um, so the 
I think usually, with, uh, at least it's, it's my personal approach, uh, when, when I usually use a taxi, I'm very stressed and I uh, indeed would like uh, to know if there is a taxi or not uh, available so I can uh, in time uh, get to, to my destination. Uh, you mentioned the, the app uh, which shall facilitate that process and uh, my question is in, in to what sense is it uh, combined, centralized with, with, other, with an existing app? So with other services so that uh, it's uh, an easy uptake and not uh, an additional app uh, in, in, a, uh, um, yeah, in, in all uh, the variety of apps that exist. So could you uh, explain um, your, your strategy concerning uh, that, that combination of, of um, or what app you have, you have chosen? Deliberately, and the second question I would uh, uh, I have uh, is related to the sensors. As far as I could see, you using sensors uh, in the ground. Uh, to me, that uh, looks very work intensive, and uh, potentially then also intensive of maintenance, uh, potentially because uh, along the years that might be. Uh, water is coming in and, and things like that. So I'm, I was wondering uh, why you have chosen uh, these types of sensors in in, uh, in opposition or in comparison to to sensors that are on on land posts uh, and and censoring then uh, the presence of of uh, of cars in that sense. Yeah, Re regarding the first question, I mean, the, the first step is just to, to have an app, you know, that they give you the location. Thinking about the evolution of this uh, solution, because at the end it's a payload case inside of a, a business model of the taxis, how they work, uh, the delivery will be introduced this data of this, the information you have in the app in the current taxi apps. You know? So at the end they can provide you the information like where you have an, a taxi, in which place are located. Mm -hmm. you know? So this is a, in a way that there are two strategies. So, or you, for instance, in, or, or you directly call a taxi or, or, or directly the, the app show you in which places they are, or even the, you can ask for a taxi, they can tell you from which stop they can leave, no? or sometimes it's easier you go. And also for the tax drivers perspective, it can be interesting because, especially also here it's very important, also it's the regulation of the city hall. I mean, often one thing is how the business works, another is how is the legal constraints or the regulatory framework. So, for instance, for the tax driver, also they can see information about even their, their business strategies. I mean, I know several locations, I know where, it's, uh, where is the one it's more empty or not, even I can have in the future a record about the occupancy or the number of clients of, of each uh, place, because often you go places that is no taxis uh, available, and in other places you have a lot. So even can, with this information, having a record of this information for the tax driver perspective, they can allow them to fit in a strategy, what is the places for them more optimal or, or when they can go, for instance. So I think for both tax it can be very useful. If you introduce a regulatory framework in, in which uh, the tax drivers uh, or people have to pick up the tax drivers in the stops, this makes it even more easier to introduce this type of measure and to introduce more efficiency in terms of the mobility of the whole city. But again, these apps, it's, it's, it's just a piece of something that has to be in a, in, a, in, a, in a whole machine, I would say, no? to, be more, to, to, to use more optimally the, the tax system, Here's the, regarding the first question. Regarding the, the second, uh, I mean, uh, personally, our colleague who was involved with this decision with the uh, company is not here now, but it's uh, uh, some years ago, I mean, this maybe Thelnex is the technological partner will, as, uh, will answer to you much better the, the questions. No? From what I understood, um, first, it's not very work intensive. Even you can think it's, but at the end, it's very easy to, to, to put these sensors. It's very easy to, to make these holes and put it. So it's a, a, a pretty easy operation. More the problem, as you said, is the maintenance, especially not, the, not introducing. No? But the problem is the technology often, if you put uh, the sensors on the top, often one of the possibilities with cameras on a type of technology are less efficient. So I remember this was the recommendation about from the technological company, but again, for sure they will answer to this question much better than, than us. 
Okay, uh, well then, uh, thank you very much uh, to send it uh, for presenting here, uh, Paco and Sergi, um, thank you uh, for sharing uh, our smart solutions from Barcelona. Let's uh, take, uh, take a view into Cologne, if you go Cologne and here it's uh, partner Cambio, car sharing uh, partner and also uh, accompanied by um, by the uh, utility services loan, we uh, are now handing over to Daniel Roman to to present um, her her case, her smart solution. And uh, Tanya, you are now able to you have the right to share your screen on the upper left hand side. Um. Okay. Do you hear me? Yes, very well. Thank okay. you very much. Well, so I, I can't find <laughs> the sign for sharing the screen. So on yes. the left hand side is only uh, on the in the menu share. on the okay, left hand screen. side. Yes. Okay. There you go. Should work now, hopefully. Yes, we can see it. Thank you. Okay, I still see Paco for some reason. Yeah. Good. Okay. Let's start. <laughs> Um, I'd first like to introduce um, my uh, neighbor sitting next to me, uh, Thomas Bishop from the KVB. He will be there later for questions also regarding the bike sharing system, which I have included in my presentation. Um, Igle asked us to, to make the presentation about making an electric um, car sharing economically viable. And um, so let's start. So how to make e-car sharing viable? First thing, of course, is regarding every car sharing, it must be a real alternative for your personally owned car, because if it's not that, it will never be viable. So how can we provide this? Let's have a look. So first of all, we will talk about the viability of car sharing itself, not e-car sharing, because that comes only in the next step. So car sharing itself is only an option for users if it is planable, so I can book my car for a certain time and a certain location. Because if it's not planable, I can't say, okay, tomorrow I need a car and I really, uh, it has to be there and I can't plan it. So you, it has to be as planable as your own car. It must be as reliable as your own car for the booked time. Uh, the car must be yours and uh, the car sharing must work like your own car. It must be adjustable to your needs. So. Um, that you always get the vehicle type that you want, small car for just a small distance or a big car because you have to transport something. It must be combinable because normally you maybe make your ways or your distances with other uh, modes of transport, so you want to combine it with other transport forms like public transport, for example. And of course, it must be affordable if car sharing is loads and heaps of uh, money more expensive than your own car, you wouldn't use it. It must be easy to access, so you have to, can't be booked via app, it must be open 24-7. And it must be available, so um, you want to have it just around the corner, you don't want to drive through a whole city to take a car. So how can we deal with this? First, for the planability, you, um, the booking must be possible or is possible with the car sharing with Cambio from one minute on to half a year in advance. Half a year in advance, for example, you need, if you want to plan a, um, a holiday trip or um, two days in advance, must be available if you plan a business trip, for example, but it must be available in one minute if you just want to book something spontaneously. Uh, it must be reliable, so it must be clear that if you book, if you have booked something, that it's really your car. So we um, can deal with this because our booking systems are able to do so. Um, it is adjustable to the needs. Um, we have the ten different vehicle types, not only e-car sharing, but also other car sharing, conventional car sharing vehicle types. We don't have e-transporters, for example. Um, it must be combinable. At the moment, we have eight mobility stations in Cologne uh, next to um, 92 other stations in Cologne where not all uh, partners are included, but at the mobility stations, um, there's public transport included, bike sharing included. I will say something about this later. 
It must be affordable. We have quite moderate prices. We can say um, to use car sharing is cheaper than your own car if you stay as a private user under 10,000 uh, kilometer a year. It's uh, even higher if you are a business customer, then, um, then you can drive even more with your own car and um, car sharing will be more affordable than your own car. So the easy access um, point is a uh, KVB app via Cambio card, KVB e-ticket, a mobility ticket, um, all those you can um, access our car sharing system. And as I said before, we have eight mobility stations and all in total are 100 stations in Cologne where you can um, book a car and take it. So the e-car sharing is a special challenge. As we all know, the distances are still a problem for some customers or for, for people to want to use it. Some of them uh, have a fear of the new technique. They think, well, maybe I, I will uh, um, end up in the middle of nowhere with no electricity left in the car. So we have to meet this. Um, available vehicles, um, as I said before, for example, we don't have an e-transporter in our fleet at the moment. Um, because there are no affordable vehicles at the moment, uh, but we know that there are some in development, so that will be a quite interesting question for the future. Um, but you don't have vehicles in every um, vehicle type that we would need for the car sharing at the moment. And of course, the, the most special challenge in e-car sharing are the costs, because for example, one of our Renault Zoe's that we have in our fleet is more as double the price than one of the normal Ford Fiestas, but we can't put it in, in, a, in a higher price class because people wouldn't um, spend that much for e-car sharing. They want to have the e-car sharing for the same price and they have the conventional car of the same size. So this is a very special, special challenge. So how do we meet this? The distances we can only meet at the moment um, um, via having um, conventional vehicle types. Um, and uh, so we have one e-vehicle, one type, and the others are all conventional. So the distances we meet with all the conventional bike um, cars. And um, of course, uh, there, there is a lot of development in the batteries. So um, it will be interesting in the future how that develops. Then the fear of new technique. We meet this point in um, having special information meetings for the customers at the e-station. So every week and every Saturday at 11 o'clock, we have um, special information meetings on um, changing uh, e-stations all over Cologne, where we invite our customers to come along and say hello, and we explain to them how the e-car um, is working and how they deal with it. So this is... Um, the people really like that meeting, so we usually have between 10 to 50 attendees at every of those meetings, and we could could already see a, um, a big increase in the usage of the e-vehicles after we installed these special information meetings. The available vehicles, um, so in, in our booking system, it's, uh, the distances are included, so you can say how many kilometers you want to drive and then you get an e-car or you don't get an e-car and uh, it will uh, tell you, the booking system will tell you that take a conventional car because the distance is too big. The costs, um, this is actually the answer to, to um, the question in the beginning, is e-car sharing viable at the moment? No, it's not. So at the moment it's only viable because uh, of the subsidies of the cross matter project um, respectively the cross subsidization of the conventional cars that we use in the car sharing. So although we almost have the same usage percentage uh, per day, well, still 10% 10, 10 less, we have a 40% usage um, a day for the conventional cars in Cologne and it's like 30% for the e-cars. So it's still a little bit uh, lower, but it increases a lot um, regard, um, regarding the information meetings, but it's still only viable because of the, the subsidies. Right, so uh, what is, what, um, apart from all this stuff that I just told you, is uh, very um, important to make a car sharing system itself viable. And why did we do it so in the cross motor project? Um, as I said in the beginning, it must be a real alternative for, the, for your personally owned car. And um, we have three steps um, that makes that possible. 
We have first physically integrated car sharing in the existing, existing structures, uh, such as public transport in the mobility stations. I will explain that in a minute. Then we combined it with other mobility options like bike sharing or parking apps. And we virtually integrated it in the ticket systems and apps uh, of the local uh, public transport provider KVB, such as in, into the KVB app or the e-ticket. The mobility stations um, are on the right hand side. You can, you can see um, our, the, the post that we, that we put up on, on the first uh, cross motor mobility station. You can see here is bike sharing included, car sharing included, electricity um, infrastructure and um, parking app. And um, so we are here quite flexible and uh, interconnect the providers physically. Which is very important is that the location, as, as you see, the first point is um, location is everything in the mobility stations. If you put a mobility station in the middle of nowhere, nobody will use it. You really need it very close to public transport, very close to the way, ways that the people um, walk every day. Um, the big mobility station should always be uh, close by uh, a railway station. That would be the perfect spot. So in, in this case here, this is just next to the railway station on the right hand side of the Rhine, the second most important railway station in Cologne, Köln, Deutz. So in the cross motor project, we um, on the right hand side, you see uh, Mülheim, which is our project area. And um, it's on the right hand side on the Rhine. On, on, uh, on the right picture, you can see in the left uh, corner, you can see our cathedral. So this is more or less the city center. And right of this on the right hand side of the Rhine is the project area Mülheim. And uh, what you see here are the, the normal orange dots are normal car sharing stations with conventional cars. Small station with uh, three to five cars usually. Then some of them are E stations where, where you have the green spots with um, uh, the plug-in thingy, and um, those are the electric stations, and then you can see that the white one is a sales agent in Mülheim, which is very important because the people can go there and ask questions. This is a sales agent of the public transport provider, KVB, and they are there and uh, explain everything regarding mobility stations, um, public transport, and car sharing, and bike sharing. On the left-hand side, you see all the mobile, all the uh, car sharing stations in throughout Cologne, um, including the east stations and sales agents. Oops, sorry. So um, the most important part that we have um, it's you don't only need the physical mobility stations; you need the integration in a ticket system. An existing ticket system is the best because people are used to it, and we have a very good ticket system in uh, Cologne with the KVB e-ticket, what you see uh, in the picture below. And um, so you can see the E on the left hand side of the ticket. And all the uh, people who have this kind of subscription tickets in uh, Cologne, Bonn and the whole area are able to open the car sharing cars with this. They are able to open the bikes of the bike sharing system with this and they are able to use public transport with that. And uh, we integrated um, um, an automatical 10% discount on all the cameo tariffs if you use this um, ticket also. So you have uh, basically all mobility um, possibilities that you have in Cologne in one ticket. And that makes it quite successful. The next thing was, um, well, actually, I'm looking for my app. Oh, it's not here. Okay, so we integrated in the app also, and um, what did we do to make it viable? Um, of course, you have to promote such a ticket, you have to promote the mobility stations, you have to, to explain all the people throughout the city that there is something that they can use. Um, we started the ticket in uh, last year in October, and um, we did loads of marketing about it, They're like videos on YouTube, we had sales campaigns on Facebook, and um, we had some bloggers involved who are blogging about um, sustainable mobility in Cologne, which was quite successful. Um, now, here we go. Here's the app. Um, we integrated it in the KVB app. Um, you see in the screen on the left hand side down, there is the car sharing sign. Then you have on the right hand side, the second from below, um, the bike sharing sign. 
And um, so people can go into the, their normal public transport provider app and um, book their car sharing car, book their bike sharing and uh, use it to see which station they have to use and so on. So um, these were the ways that we tried to replicate it um, in app on press, uh, on newsletters and on, on the digital um, information system at the tram and bus stops also. Um, but it's not only done with all those um, internet stuff, you have to, to be close to the customers. So we, uh, what we did next to the mobility stations, we really uh, physically visited um, business customers, companies next to the stations and told them there is a new station, maybe that would be interesting for you if you have your own business fleet, maybe you would like to install some car sharing next to it. Um, use the bike sharing, not always use the car, maybe where it's possible you could use the bike sharing, things like this. Then we made a cameo registration possible at the KBB customer centers all over Cologne, so they don't have to come to Cambio, they can, to, can go to their normal, their normal ways to the public transport provider. This is all to, to uh, lower the threshold for people to go there and, and ask for new uh, modes of transport. And then what we did to, to go closer to the people, you can see on the left hand side down the picture, um, we have demonstration booths on the weekly markets and other events. And as you can see, there are quite some people standing there and um, listening to somebody who explains the car sharing on this market there. Right, so this was basically an overview how you can make car sharing viable. As I already said, um, the e-car sharing is not viable yet. Um, as we still have the problems with the distances, we still have the problems with the costs, but um, I think we are on a good way and it will be possible for the future to make it viable. But um, which I want to make very clear before I close now is that car sharing or e-car sharing is not the solution for, for transport problems in cities, that the spine or the backbone must always be public transport and car sharing and especially e-car sharing can only be um, Next, uh, working next to it, and um, yeah, the, the second step, I think. Okay, that's the presentation. Thank you. Tanya, thank you very, very much. Uh, that was very comprehensive and uh, also self critical, if I uh, hear your concluding remarks here. <laughs> <laughs> um that that is that is what what is needed i think uh, if we um look at at the problems uh, mobility problems of of today there is no one silver bullet but uh, actually uh however with integrating uh, integrated solutions there is a lot to gain so i'm um, again opening um now uh, the question related uh, to your specific uh, presentation uh, please indicate if you have a question or chat with us. I will now select you all and uh, make you all panelists so you are able to mute and unmute yourself. So if you think you have a very stable connection, uh, please um, yeah, unmute yourself, introduce you, uh, yourself and, and uh, ask your questions. If not, if you need to gather your thoughts still, uh, I would like to maybe uh, ask the first question to myself, um, or actually uh, in, in relation to um, the cooperation with the city. We have here, for instance, the city of Turku also present, uh, and, and uh, maybe here it is, it is uh, interesting to understand the relationship between a, a private uh, company, uh, Cambio, um, I, I guess is, uh, uh, yeah, uh, I mean, by nature is, is a private uh, entity and then the city, uh, a public uh, authority, and, and then that combination between, uh, yeah, public policies and, and uh, private, however, very uh, also broadly looking and ambitiously looking um, to solve uh, several uh, urban problems as well. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, how is that relationship, um, uh, how, uh, which recommendations from your perspective would you give other uh, city authorities how to implement 
a, uh, a car sharing system fostering uh, car sharing and maybe uh, what what to take in uh, into account uh, promoting e-car sharing as well mm -hmm. well first of all um, we are in a cooperation with the city of Cologne like for almost 20 years since 1999 so we are doing car sharing in Cologne for, since 1992 so we're there quite long on the market, so the city of Cologne knows us <laughs> um, and we're working quite well together. Um, you, you need, as, as a private company and to, to, who wants to install some car sharing throughout the city, um, especially for the mobility stations, for, for the bigger uh, stations where you have all the bike sharing and the public transport and the car sharing together, you always need um, a city council because then it comes to spaces that you need that are public space. And when you're um, a city council, you should always have a very close look at the company you decide to, to work with because um, you should always look what, what, is, what is the goal or what, what is the, the aim of this company? Is the aim of this company they really want to, to give you um, other solutions for transport or is the, um, and make, make the um, a city more uh, lively and with less cars and more bikes and more foot, um, uh, um, how do you say, not foot passengers, um, uh, pedestrians and, and more areas to play. So you should always ask the question, is their main focus on marketing and selling their own cars? And this is the reason why they're doing car sharing or do they have an environmental approach like we do? And um, so this, um, the thing is, um, you should always have a very close look. Is it a station-based car sharing company or is it a, is it a so-called free-floating car sharing company? Um, because free-floating uh, usually is only in the city centers and in the city centers there's enough traffic. We don't need more traffic um, with even more car sharing cars and car sharing fleets so standing around in the city center. So um, this would be um, a thing that you should think about if you are city council. Always have a very close look, which is what is the focus of this specific car sharing company that you want to include. Thank you. Then again, an opportunity for anyone else to speak up and formulate a question or a comment. It seems that is not the case, so let me ask my, my last question. <laughs> um, uh, Tanya, in relation to the uh, public transport system, it's in, uh, interesting uh, to see that um, you have um, established an integrated uh, approach uh, now with, a, with a, in terms of the registration, in terms of uh, uh, payment. So how difficult was that uh, to establish? Um, how long did it take and, and what is now kind of the, the business model behind uh, that agreement? Is, uh, how much is, is then uh, actually um, yeah, who, who gains best from it? Uh, obviously, uh, I hope all participants of such an agreement. <laughs> yes, well, uh, let's start with the last question. Um, it's, um, well, we, we, we all, we all um, have some, um, um, we all participate, so, so it's, it's, not, it's not only us. So, for example, like last year when we started the project, we had 1,200 new customers um, started with the e-ticket and they were on top of those who already started car sharing. So um, for us, it was clearly um, um, the opportunity to gain new customers, but for the KVB also, because um, they, promoting, they are promoting the bike sharing, their bike sharing system, and their public transport subscription tickets. And uh, what they could see, um, that um, they, the people keep their subscription tickets although they don't drive that much public transport on them, but use the bike sharing and the car sharing instead, which was quite interesting. And um, so um, making the, the um, different modes of transport that you can use with the e-ticket bigger, the, the, the whole um, things that you can use with it, it makes it even more interesting for, for the citizens of Cologne to use such a subscription ticket, even if they don't use the normal public transport. So um, that's to your last question. And the other one, I forgot, sorry, could you, could you repeat that one? Uh, 
it was related uh, to how long did it uh, oh, sorry. you? Yes. Yes, um, of course, we, we, um, we cooperate with, with the KDB since 1997 already, but um, we started very slowly with just some marketing uh, um, things like um, having, having some um, no subscription fee for if, if you entered with a, with a KDB ticket or something like this. But then um, it developed a lot during the years, and through the Chrome Smarter Project, uh, we started this e-ticket idea, this integrated approach, and it took its... It took us um, alone for, for just for programming alone. It took us almost a year to integrate all the tickets in our booking system, and uh, it was only possible because of the Cross Martyr project. And um, so it took us quite a while, um, because uh, basically because of that, that we didn't want to have just a quick marketing effect. We wanted to make it really work and work its sustainable, sustainably working, and not only just for for. Uh, quick um, shop window to, to have something for the press or for the media. So we wanted to really make it work. And that was the reason why we thought about it very thoroughly, like for, and, and worked on it like for one and one and a half years about, yeah, that must be so one and a half years, I would say. Okay, then uh, thank you very much for sharing also that uh, difficulty or actually uh, the prison of the European project uh, towards Cologne. Uh, which meant the integration of the different um, yeah, ticketing systems due to Grow Smarter. That is uh, great to hear. I would like now to hand over to Victor from the uh, from Transport Malta. Uh, Victor is representing uh, the city of Ballet uh, as well, uh, which is uh, a fellow city in. Uh, more smarter and uh, Victor is able to to share with us now not only his screen, I hope this works, uh, but also of the lessons learned uh, you took on from observing the uh, demonstration sites and the demonstration solutions within the Lighthouse City, Stockholm, Barcelona and Cologne. So Victor, I see you are sharing your screen. The floor is yours. Thank you very much. I hope everyone is um, hearing me well, and good day to everyone. Um, thank you, thank you, Victor, for organizing this webinar. Basically, um, my presentation is going to be from a different perspective from from my two preceding colleagues, because Transport and Water is the national authority for transport and water. It is the regulator. So basically, um, this webinar is, is, is a nice mix of the, the, the private sector combining with the regulators. And uh, as it happened, now I know I'm sharing my screen, but it all started with this. November 2013, Malta launched the National Electromobility Action Plan. And basically, um, it is online so everyone can see it and I'm giving everyone time to have a look at it and maybe take some names, uh, some, some, some words so they can look it up. Basically, we, we formulated the Electromobility Action Plan, which did not only look at the electromobility, but at providing sustainable transport. This was November 2013. Then we came into Grow Smarter, and this gave us the opportunity to go from the theory, um, theoretical <coughs> policy paper, into seeing what other cities have done about it. And, uh, this is how this is how we started analyzing and replicating two ideas, which also we could see from Cologne, Barcelona, and also Stockholm. Um, so basically, we know we know these problems. Um, Malta, in particular, has a very high density of, of car ownership. Imagine the population is 470,000, and we're talking of 300 and or something like 10,000 cars registered. So it's almost all the adults in Malta own a car. And there are shortages in parking. As everyone, uh, in Malta, parking is free on the roads, um, uh, except for car parks, obviously. And because of this system also, um, it takes time to use public transport. There is an element of high percentage, almost 20% of monthly spending on car ownership costs. Um, 
the city center, the capital city of Valletta has a CCTV system which, which basically charges uh, whoever goes inside and uh, car sharing could possibly um, show uh, it's shown that it can take up to almost 3,000 euro savings per year. So, given our experience, and, uh, and over here you see the prices, which 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 are in water. Um, I don't know, um, a 12 kilometer trip from the airport to the Slimaya, which is considered to be uh, a major tourist area. It's 80 to 21 euros. So um, this is the current scenario, basically. I won't repeat all this because um, you can see it over here. But basically, with this in mind, um, uh, we started to look at providing mobility as a service to the population. So, so you know, over there you can see that it's not in any in any way uh, the numbering is just for the sake of numbering. It's not a priority. But we did actually start working in that order. Um, actually, item number two is, is has started earlier, so bike sharing could be number one. But basically, we're talking of all these modes of transport, um, which, as a as a transport authority, we have to provide as a service to the population. So I think I think as an entity, one has to, as a government entity, as a central entity. One has to look at these at, at these issues as providing a service. Um, you have to prepare the groundwork for the companies like Cambio and like, 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 uh, the other company to, to where they, where they can uh, sow their, their, their business and then you can get the harvest from the good usage of all these um, ideas. So we looked at at, at what our um, um, like how cities showed us in, in, in Cologne and Barcelona in Stockholm and I'm going to talk a bit about the car sharing service and how we went about it. Basically we issued a tender. This was issued around about the end of 2016. So so basically we are now running into the end of 2018, just to give you an idea. And it took about two years, or well, let's say a year and a half until the whole process for the uh, tender system to go into. So bureaucracy, unfortunately, and administrative issues um, do, do hamper and do stop um, the process. It, it's not as fast as one would like. Um, so that is one method to take into consideration. Um, these, are some of the, these are some of the issues we, we provided in our tender. Basically, um, government, the central entity, provided 450 exclusive car parking spaces to these to this car sharing concession. They gave back a fleet of 150 electric vehicles, and they also had to have to provide 225 electric vehicle charging network points. So basically, what we said is. The country has to have 500 charging points. We already invested in 100. So in this tender, we gave the facility to the to the tender to the bidder to provide 225 um, charging points, which it will use to charge its own fleet of 150 cars. And in, in the next step, the 225 charging points will also be integrated in the national charging network. And so basically, you don't need to be a, a car share user and you can actually charge your electric vehicle on, on the on the pillar which is on the pillars which are provided by the by the uh, by the company. Obviously I don't have to repeat all the good things which which Tanya before I mentioned. Well, there has to be a real time and the booking system which makes it comfortable for the client to use it. It, it has to come towards the client. And basically this is the company um, is called GoTo, and if I may go on the next one, it has it has a series of it has a series of plans, which is either by a pay per minute or a round trip or a one way. This is this is what what you could say the business model, um, which this company has has um, decided to operate in. 
I, I forgot to say, as I usually say, my colleagues from Ikle and, and Tanya know what, I, what I'm going to say now, that Volta is just 25 kilometers long and 18 kilometers wide. And uh, so the distances in Volta are, are what they are. And on, on the on the left hand side, this is basically just a graph prepared by the company share, providing the car sharing um, services, how it perceived distances which can be used by the services compared also to the pedestrian ability and, and, and bikes. Um, yeah, uh, how does it work? It's, it's, it's as Tanya said, like most other um, similar um, services, you have to register, find the car available, take the car and then park it in a designated parking spot. I have to say that in Malta we have adopted a specific designated parking spots all around the island in specific areas and uh, if I can anticipate a little bit this is where the headaches start coming in from the authority like like transport water. That there has to there has to be a, a very fluid understanding that since parking on streets is, is public domain, nobody likes to have a parking space taken away from them um, and given to, to, to another entity. So, you know, one has to keep an open mind to, to all this and, and then there has to be a level of cooperation. So we had to go to each and every local council, there are 54 in Monza and 12 in, in, in Gozo, and uh, we had to find a compromise. That is the best word, compromise, that we find we find the best places which are hopefully not in front of residences or not in front of garages or, or shops which require the parking spaces but we try and find open spaces and a solution has been found it hasn't been easy but you know like any other thing which makes human beings nothing is easy but at the end a solution is found through compromise um so this is basically a repetition of, of uh, what we have just said you have to keep in mind that in a country like Malta or in other countries, you have to keep it also for tourists, apart from residents. And these are these are these are different fates which which can be offered. Um, as I said, the Maltese population is very near half a million now, and we do have a million and a half tourists per year coming over to visit us. So there has to be a mix. The service has to offer a mix. Of people who use it for a specific time and people who tend to use it on a longer basis throughout the whole year because they are residents here and they could possibly offer um, from a business point of view um, I would say a shoulder when it's a quiet heuristic period it's the residents who, who will use it and, and, and vice versa so one has to be open also to these to these things um, the next one going to and being very fast. The next, the next thing I wanted to share with you is the bicycle pedelec sharing system. And so Transport Malta, you can see from the link over there, um, we have issued guidelines for bicycle and pedelec sharing systems. And just to give you a brief overview over here, um, we do not go into the actual planning applications for the location of the uh, um, parking structures. It is, it is an issue which the service provider have to offer. There are there are certain rules and, and, and permits which have to be given from the lands authority and also from the local council. And once these permits are in hand, okay, and um, transport water will then um, see how how all this fits in with the whole with the whole system we are providing and eventually um, we can go ahead and grant a permit, okay, um, which just costs 200 euros per year, okay, and as I said, it is up to the company who is offering the service to get the, the permits and find the places, um, um, bicycles, the bicycle, the cycling, uh, I would say culture is still a little bit um, on the big burner of Malta, and only recently, only last week, we, Transport Malta, have launched the uh, cyclic policy, which is up for consultation for the public, and it will actually take in, con taking in consideration also these, these services that we're providing. 
Um, I wanted to say just one small detail that although we are looking at Valletta being the capital city and being the central hub of the principal activities on the island, being it government services, being it tourist and administrative and also business, um, uh, Valletta is, is, is surrounded by a densely populated um, and demographic, demographically very challenging um, geography of, of, of councils. So when you're talking of Valletta, we're talking of a big chunk of the whole island, and it, it has its own council. So, so when we come to deal with it as a, from, a planning, from a planning point of view, we as transport motor have to also respect and, and, and discuss and, and, and uh, come to a compromise also with the local council, which I must say is very pro, is very outgoing in, in, in its, in its um, in its uh, actions. I would not go into other minimum requirements or guidelines for the sharing for the docking stations of bicycles. You all know this, anyone who comes from big large cities know about all this, but for us it was all new. So we have to like, not invent the wheel, but invent the wheel for the island. Um, and basically we have two bike sharing companies. One is Next Bike. Which, which is, which is um, a bike rental uh, company, which mainly goes with normal conventional bikes, um, although it is also thinking of going into, into electric bikes now. Basically, Next Bike offers the service um, using, using systems like everyone else can think of with, with modern technology to make it easy. And basically, it is also now going into e-bikes. And these are more or less like the prices which, which they are charging. Again, I will not go into details because this is private business, so it's not, it's, not, it's not incumbent on us as a public entity to go into all this. But this is just to give you an idea of how it's working. All this is available on, on, on the websites, obviously. The other, the other company which offers um, this is the public transport. It's Malta public transport. It is not transport Malta. It is Malta public transport, which is, I would say, like a private company offering the um, public transport, the buses going on a scheduled route, and now it's going into offering um, electric electric cyclists, pedelecs, to go into a, into the bus share into the uh, bike sharing. Um, uh, uh, system also, um, which is like creating a mobility hub. So this particular docking station is next to the bus terminal, to the main bus terminal. So basically, you either arrive by electric bike to the to the bus terminal, or when you arrive at the bus terminal with the bus, you can take your bike and you can go around the city of Valletta, as you can see, as you can see over here. Um, again, this is this is more or less the system they are offering. Um, I will not repeat as I as I've been saying what Tanya has been saying because she she really hit the nail on the head by saying that it has to be very customer friendly, both in the pricing and also in how it is available. Yeah. Un unless unless you go near the customer, it will not work. Um, I think it, I think it's the most crucial. It is the most crucial of of, of considerations. All this is practically very new for Malta. So basically, the car sharing company was launched less than a month ago on the island. Um, uh, the uh, Tallinia service has been working, I believe, for some four or five months, and the next bike has been working a bit longer. Um, unfortunately, we do not have we do not have um, metrics so far, or business methods, because as I said, we are a public entity. But so far, um, things seem to be thriving well, because as, as I have said, for example, the Tallinia, the, 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 the um, public transport, the public transport company, has now all uh, the, the, the the next bike, sorry, the uh, this company which started off with providing conventional bikes is now going into e-bikes. Um, so so you know, we seem we seem to be going towards the way we want. Um, this, is, this is basically the, the, the presentation I had, to, I, had to, um, I had to give you, because as a follower city, I think um, we, have, we have worked well with, with, with the lighthouse cities in, in seeing um, what, what 
they offer and how we can adopt it to our um, needs. Um, I have to say that there are challenges, and the challenges are, are various. I will not repeat what I said, but administrative challenges are probably the most um, time-consuming and sometimes frustrating. You have to discuss, you have to discuss with local councils, you have to discuss with local businesses also, you have to discuss things with, with the other stakeholders like taxi drivers and, and, and um, taxi services, and least, not, not, not the least, with the, also with the electricity companies which are providing um, the charging points where you require them either for the bus, either for the car sharing, or for the bicycle sharing. With that experience, I think I can close my presentation. And uh, any questions, I can I can take I can take as we come along. Now I need to stop sharing my screen, maybe. Thank you very much, Victor, uh, for yeah. providing us with, with your presentation. And I invite everyone again to to check with us uh, to ask some questions. Uh, Tanya, you have recently visit, visited Malta. And uh, it would be interesting to hear what impressed you most uh, in terms of good practice and what advice uh, you may have given uh, Victor to continue his, his uh, uh, yeah, great work there. Okay, can you hear me again? Yes. Right. Um, well, I'm not sure I'm in the position to give him advice because I think they make it quite um, well, very well there. Um, as, as you can see, what he presented is um, that Malta has a very special situation. And you asked me um, the question which advice I would give city councils or the counties in total. And I think um, here in, in Malta, you can have a very good example of that it always depends where you are. Because everything that I said about um, the, the e car sharing in Cologne. Um, is not uh, uh, the problem in Malta, as the distances are very um, smaller than in Cologne, and so you can wonderfully install an e-car sharing that makes sense. Or the other thing that I said in Cologne, you shouldn't do a free-floating HB system, which in Cologne doesn't work. We, we have HB systems, and they bring loads of more traffic into the city center, but don't take people away from cars. And on Malta, that is working because it is kind of a semi-free floating, semi-flex system. They have the public spaces all over the place where you can park the e-car e sharing cars. So it makes sense to install an HB system. Um, it wouldn't make sense in Cologne because we don't have that much public space that we can give to, to car sharing. So um, I, I'm not sure if I have to, to put that much advice. The only advice maybe that I would give but I already told him this two weeks ago when we were in Valletta that it makes no sense to install all that stuff without um, a proper uh, bicycle infrastructure. And as this is not working from one day to another, it really needs a cycling plan for Transport Malta or for the, the, um, the island of Malta in total. But this is nothing that works from, from one day to the other. And I think he knows that already, so I'm not sure if I have to give him that advice. Yeah, um, in fact, um, we launched the cycling policy, which is up for consultation. And this is actually, uh, I, I would say, like, take your advice. Uh, well, it, was, it was being prepared before, but yet yeah, your advice makes sense that without a proper, proper infrastructure, you cannot just provide a service. So, yes, um, we did well, we just did it the other way around. First, we started providing the service. It's like pushing the demand, okay? Now now we have the consultation document, and I invite everyone to go and have a look into it. It is available on, 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 on for the public use, and uh, you know, let's, let's get some feedback going from, from and, and ideas, like, like, like opinions like Tanya's, yeah? are most very welcome um, from, the, from other countries, from other experiences. Yeah, but we are following that, that too. Yeah, infrastructure has to follow. Now, I, I must say, I was impressed, both in Cologne and both in Barcelona, uh, with the way cycling, cars, motorcycling, motorcycles, delivery vans, public transport is really well nicely intermixed. And, you know, I went there and I got I got the experiences back and hopefully some of those ideas are 
integrate also in our in our second policy draft. So yeah, thank you for that. Thank you. Then I would like uh, to yeah, sum up. Uh, also, this will be now with. Uh, uh, with some questions that uh, I would still like to pose because we we find them uh, usually in the replication process now very important. We have uh, every every one of the panelists has actually uh, provided us with uh, background on what is the current business model uh, viable or not. In the cases here you you have seen we have uh, talked. Um, uh, about uh, how to measure uh, success, not so much uh, yet, and, uh, at least uh, not, not uh, to, uh, uh, specifically uh, towards uh, maybe the, uh, the solution of, of uh, e-car sharing and, and uh, bike sharing. So here, uh, uh, but also the, the taxi system uh, had some, some data here, so maybe you could uh, provide us still a re reflection of what um, a recommendation on what indicators would you uh, actually focus on uh, for others to to monitor in order and this relates to the first question in order to persuade them uh, Victor you have mentioned uh, all the different uh, elements uh, the, the city council the businesses uh, particularly the taxi companies the energy companies the transport uh, uh, public transport system so again uh, very shortly from your perspective what uh, indicators are worth monitoring in order to best persuade uh, these different types of um, stakeholders to to uh, buy into the solution you have presented. I, I would like to start with uh, with Paco, maybe. Okay, the implementation with first telling who manage the subject of the sensors and batteries requirement with the Barcelona City Council. Then IMET is the Institute of Metropolitan the Taxis with the communication with the taxi drivers so that the day of the sensors sitting do not park in this in this parking. Then the IDOS CAD with the creation of the application and then with then it is the monitoring of the measurement and the treatment of the data. Then the the problem of different environment is the taxi driver. At the time of the installation, always were asking the workers to stay finished soon, and they did not let work well. Then the replication, I, I shall just say it in the presentation, things changed a lot in um, 2014. The growth market proposal was written, application which and my taxi were not as widespread as today, and current technology offers more options. And this is all of this question. Thank you. Uh, before I hand uh, to Tanya, I would also like uh, to give you um, the possibility to answer the question that was just chatted uh, on if you have actually also included uh, an impact assessment uh, on how smart taxis uh, potentially impact on the model shift uh, within Barcelona. Is, is the model shift, is it part of your approach, uh, your arguments uh, and have you evidence uh, that that this is positively influenced with your solution, Paco? Yeah, well, the taxi in this moment is a complicated transport because is the one of taxis uh, not the business is then is Uber or, or Cabify and there's a problem with the with the cost with the with the taxi driver and then is the this this is complicated because the the, the, the taxi driver is pay uh, more cost with the the other companies and this moment is is compli complicated because <coughs> this transport is private with the taxi drivers and um, I think this, this is the problem in the Barcelona. 
Okay, thank you very much <laughs> then um, for, for stating the situation um, as it is. Uh, handing over to Tanya. Uh, Tanya, how would you answer uh, this this uh, question? Um, the question. W would you just uh, make the question again, please? Sure. Uh, so, what uh, what uh, KPIs, what indicators would yes. you recommend to monitor in order to uh, uh, have the right arguments then for the different sets of stakeholders and uh, potentially also including uh, how to assess uh, how has Cambio, uh, how has car sharing actually influenced the model shift for the better since you mm -hmm. are also advocating for the public system. Yeah, true. Um, well, it, it makes the variety uh, bigger, of course, for people because as I said, what, what, what you tried to... to um, well, our focus is in, in, in this project is to change the mobility behavior of people. And if you want to change a mobility behavior, you have to give them all the possibilities that they could possibly use um, for, for doing their transport. And car sharing, of course, sometimes it has to be a car. And if it has to be a car and the distance is all right, then of course it's always better to use an e-car instead of conventional one. And um, it's always better to use public transport, but sometimes you have to transport bigger things. So car sharing um, brings all those possibilities to this. So this is the, the main uh, uh, point um, to, to convince people um, to change their mobility, just to, to give them the whole variety of it. But um, I just wanted to regard to something you said about Victor's presentation. Um, I didn't say that the car sharing is not viable. The e-car sharing is not viable at the moment. The car sharing system itself is viable. It always is viable when the location is good. So in between the project, only the stations where the location isn't perfect are not viable. The others are all viable and already, and they would be viable without any subsidies. So this is very important. Uh, just it, it, they are viable because we we connect all all the other modes of transport, and because the locations are very well uh, placed. And um, it's only in in the project, only in, in the one location where we start from the beginning. We said that it's not a good location because it's it's too far away from from the, uh, the station and everything. Um, only those are not vi viable, and only the electric car sharing is not viable with subsidies. I just wanted to make that point clear. You can have a car sharing system that is viable without any subsidies when the locations are good. Thank um, you very much for making this clear and uh, and I hope I have uh yeah, I, I haven't confused our uh, audience in that sense. <laughs> oh, uh, sorry, obviously you wanted to, to make this point. So this uh this is mm -hmm. what I also meant. Um yeah, okay. going so, over mm -hmm. yes? No, no, I'm sorry. Okay, uh, handing over now to Victor again. Uh, in relation, you may actually mentioned the different uh, stakeholders uh, that uh, the challenge you, uh, the EU as Transport Malta, uh, potentially uh, in a in a long uh, dialogue uh, yeah, discussions. So, what, uh, from your perspective, uh, would you recommend people to monitor, which indicators to monitor, in order to have the right arguments on the tables? That are um, to them. Yeah, um, Valletta, the capital city itself, has a CVA system, which is a central um, system, which basically you pay as you're going in and out. And from that, there is already a, a, a very clear indication of which vehicles, what type of vehicles do go in. So hopefully, hopefully, uh, as I said, it, the, the car sharing. Uh, company motor has only been launched in about a month from today, a month ago. So basically, you know, as, as, as weeks and months roll by, we will be able to see how many actual car sharing cars are going in as against private owned cars. So that, that, that is possibly, I would say, the best metric one can use on, on, as a KPI. Our intention, obviously, is to improve the number of car sharing vehicles going in as against the, the number of private cars. Um, uh, so that is basically, uh, you know, in a small country, in a small place like Malta, we can think of making these kind of um, uh, metrics to measure the success. 
Um, obviously, obviously, there are other ways of checking. As I said, we are the transport authority for more. We are not a private company, so much of the data is is is, is in the company is are the company's data. But there are ways how we can we can get our hands on 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 metrics. Having said all this, having said all this, maybe in in larger countries like your countries, it's not so commonly uh, felt like on the whole population. But in a small population in a small country like Malta, the actual um, uh, metrics which we are obliged to respect when it comes to 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 to, to, to um, figures on on on, on carbon footprinting or or, or, or on, um combustible fumes and, and and all the rest we have to we have to decrease them and i think that is the best um possibly pressure area where where, where we have to um address we do have metrics like the valetta cva we can actually know how what numbers we can actually know how many taxis are traveling between the the airport and, and the hotels but I think the burdens, the KPIs have to work. All our projects have to work on the KPIs, which are ultimately the, the, the results we have to obtain as a country. And uh, we are, for example, working um, very, very, very fast on, on, actually, on actually establishing the cutoff date um, for the importation of petrol and diesel cars, um, which are a big 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 headache for us all and you know figures are not looking nice but we have to arrive at that so the whole population has to take responsibility and the company has to take responsibility and, and before a government department has to buy cars they have to start thinking of um, using these measures in their business plans and we, we do have an interest from some entities already who are asking us to, 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 to negotiate with them, with the car sharing company, so that instead of buying um, company cars, um, especially with government entities, they um, engage with the car sharing company. So these are our experiences at least. Um, other countries, other cities could have other solutions. These are, these are more or less our, our, our tangible solutions, I would say. I don't know if I have answered your question. Um, yes, you did, and uh, I uh, thank you very much. I would now like uh, to use the last two minutes uh, just uh, to share with you some points which I took note of and uh, which may also uh, uh, you have you have to, uh, taken note of yourself. Uh, so briefly summarizing uh, what our uh, four panelists have actually expressed. Uh, in a nutshell, so uh, for uh, the Barcelona case and um, here presented uh, by Sergi and Paco with uh, the smart uh, taxi system in place uh, eluded us that um, taxis uh, uh, or customers uh, seem to, to use taxis uh, much more uh, 75% uh, expressed that uh, that uh, if if they would know that a taxi is available, so that uh, leads to an integration of uh, potentially an app which is combined with the uh, public transport system as as a recommendation. Uh, the question of if the sensors as pressure points are not uh, potentially work intensive, where uh, was answered that it's actually uh, deliberately chosen uh, technology uh, uh, choice and it was not. Uh, it isn't so work intensive, so uh, um, that that is to note as well, as well as uh, the overall aim of of that uh, solution shall uh, is is fostered by the city with the perspective of uh, cutting CO2 emissions, so um, reducing. Um, the, the floating cost, one can say, or the floating fleet uh, of taxi drivers that are looking for potential customers. So that is that is. Um, to take a note of, of that uh, solution. Then the solution uh, concerning car sharing and uh, e-car sharing in Cologne, uh, car sharing as a planable 
uh, yeah, adjustable, reliable, combinable, affordable, and accessible solutions. Uh, Tanya uh, outlined uh, how such a solution, or, uh, how a car sharing should look like in that regard, um, and uh, stressed very much that um, car sharing as such, if the mobility stations are uh, centrally, are strategically located, uh, maybe in combination with, with uh, a mobility plan, uh, a discussion uh, with, with the city as well as with the public transport um, provider is then key to, uh, to make car sharing viable. Uh, E-car sharing is, uh, it seems, uh, not yet uh, viable uh, or only viable with um, subsidies, but uh, a good marketing, um, uh, Tanya mentioned different aspects here, so news, PR, uh, also an integrated uh, registration system uh, with the public uh, transport uh, body uh, in, in the terms of app, but also in the ticketing uh, can be really a, a step forward here. And last but not least, from Victor uh, Transport Mata, we uh, we were uh, he acknowledged the fact that um, there is uh, a useful combination between uh, national planning and also local planning. So starting off uh, in that particular case uh, of Malta, which is of course a small uh, European country, but uh, that uh, potentially also could be considered in other. Um, yeah, other frameworks of your city, mobility as a service. Uh, that is, I think, one message from, from Victor, which, which I find very interesting to, to contemplate. Uh, what are we offering to, to our customers? Uh, and let, let it be a perspective from the public authority or a private actor. Uh, but I think here this is key to, to have an answer. Uh, and have an attractive answer to, to that question. Uh, the combination of local and national initiative, uh, I already uh, emphasized. Uh, in Malta, we have um, an interesting mix of, of residential users and tourist users, which, which with a lot of peaks and, and differences. But here, in, uh, even more so, we need a more strategic plan. Um, uh, and, and the backbone, as, as also Tanya mentioned, uh, should be in terms of car sharing or bike sharing systems, uh, uh, the obviously the public transport um, uh, companies uh, or at least operating them with uh, in, in combination that is not easy um, Victor mentioned his his challenges uh, in terms of uh, different uh, conversations with with uh, persuading the council the business the taxi companies e companies and public transport uh, providers so um, it is important, um, that was the last uh, point of our discussion, to include um, the right uh, performance indicators, uh, the r monitor um, yeah, indicators deliberately that uh, would be able to uh, persuade then uh, political as well as technical decision making. Um, of that sort. And with that, I hope uh, our uh, webinar has provided you with some answers uh, to these uh, three very interesting solutions. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, we have recorded the webinar so you are able to, to receive it uh, and are able to, to share it. And with that, I would like uh, to wish you in the name of the Grow Smarter team uh, a Merry Christmas and a happy sustainable new year 2019. We have more webinars to come, so uh, I would like with that also to thank uh, in particular our four panelists, but also you as, as attendees. Please spread the word about Grow Smarter Solutions. Thank you very much. You're waving, very nice. <laughs> have a good day, everyone.